All right, good Friday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, before we begin, you just spoke to someone very special. It's Fleet Week. Uh, Admiral Michelle Howard, she is a four-star wow. U.S. Navy Admiral. And uh, those of us, I mean, my father served, his grandfather served. Now, they were in the Army, okay? So there was a, you know, Army-Navy rivalry. But uh, I want to know, to tell people that we should be very proud of the people in our armed services and thank them uh, how much this woman has done in terms of, I say, counteracting a notion of glass ceiling, of, of where you can go. Now, obviously, I'm a guy, so I don't have really a right to speak. But I can just tell you I'm honored by man, woman, it doesn't matter. Four-star admiral, wow. You wow. don't meet them very often. And, and uh, I am honored to do so. And I thanked her for her service. Oh, we are all very grateful. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the markets. Jim, Salesforce. Yeah, look, uh, Salesforce is now, um, it, it, it's making a move against Oracle and SAP like I haven't seen it. And uh, he came out swinging last night, Mark Benioff. And why is he swinging? Because he has this uh, retail business that he's cobbled from Demandware, which he bought, which is a really good acquisition, and from Crux. And, uh, and what he's done is he's put together with Einstein, which is their artificial intelligence, a rather remarkable pro uh, base, uh, platform, so that when you're on any retailer, you can have the same thing as Amazon. Now, when we order from Amazon, it always says, if you like this, then you might like that, and it gives you customer views, and tells you one. Imagine a salesperson at a retail store who is armed with similar information about you, uh, and they are making artificial intelligence uh, go to work for bricks and mortar to compete with Amazon. Uh, he has eight out of 10 of the largest retailers on his platform. This is a remarkable turn. It started when he bought Exact Target. We tend to think of CRM as really uh, managing your own sales force. No, this is a marketing cloud that is so powerful that I think it's going to be driving what is a company that has got 10 billion in revs to 20 billion in revenues in a shorter time than anyone ever believed. By the way, the deferred revenue, uh, really fabulous here. Uh, the build and unbuild uh, uh, numbers are 15 billion, uh, you know, almost 15 billion, and uh, you know that means that's actually like the cash. So anyone who ever thought this company was not making a lot of money, wrong. <laughs> All right, what about IBM telling its employees, hey, you can't work from home anymore? Look, I think IBM is a company that is like Cisco, which we own fractional owners, frantically, frantically trying to uh, make it so it's high, it's cognitive, and there they've got Watson, which by the way, they're in partnership with Salesforce. Mark likes that partnership. But they are cl I'm frantically trying to get it so that everybody uh, is on the same page, they got to grow revenues faster, but they have this big legacy business, and I think it is important that everybody, that no work at home, because it's about teamwork. And Ginny Rometty is, is moving as fast as she can. Now, I know that Warren Buffett did not say that they're moving, as fast, uh, moving fast enough, and he's unhappy with the stock price, but I would point out, I don't know what else she can do. She's do. I don't know what else Chuck Robbins can do. They are doing what's right, short of just going and buying while when Salesforce was lower. It's hard. And now Oracle um, is doing it. They're doing. They bought. They they, you know, they bought a company. They bought a lot of companies. And um, SAP has bought a lot of companies. But you need to if you want to stay in the cloud, or if you want to migrate to the cloud as an enterprise business like IBM, it takes some time. And, and you got to give them some time. And I think they've done a good job. But people have tired of a stock that doesn't go on. I get that. All right, in real money, you talk about this interesting tech play Autodesk. Yeah, Autodesk is something, with, when the stock was at 80, we went on Mad Money and said, look, here's the greatest stock you never heard of. Because um, Autodesk does the computer-aided design, computer-aided animation. They're behind a lot of movies. They're behind all the fast, uh, um, divine, when you want to design a car, you design a skyscraper. When you want to design a cell phone, it's their software. And people don't know them. Now, they had 183,000 net ad customers this quarter. And what I think is really important that people have to realize about Autodesk is, they are the engine behind a lot of devices, you see, uh, and they have a subscription model. They didn't have that until 2015. It has, it has just turned on the jets. It's making them so much more money than the way they used to do it. Remember, Salesforce is a subscription model. Workday is a subscription model. It's a really lucrative way to have recurring revenue. Uh, and that's a recurring revenue story. 90% of their business is recurring. I, the stock, obviously, too late to jump on it today. But you get one of those market-wide sell-offs like we had earlier this week. Remember that company. 
Autodesk ADSK. All right, Bernstein analysts are now covering NVIDIA with a $165 price target. Look, NVIDIA, you know, I listened to the NVIDIA, I listened to the Applied Materials call last night, and they talked about a shortage of machines to be able to make artificial intelligence uh, chips. Wow, how good is that for NVIDIA? NVIDIA is gaming. Uh, and, and the gaming business is, is incredibly strong. NVIDIA is the, creates artificial, artificial intelligence chips. If you listen to Jensen's quarter, and I've been telling everyone, go get Jensen's conference call, because it's a tutorial. He will tell you how artificial intelligence is going to eat software. And he has the artificial intelligence suite. You have to use it. How do you know that there's, okay, so let's, let's get the Nintendo Switch, this new Nintendo hot product that, by the way, drove Target's numbers up in electronics. That's powered by NVIDIA. NVIDIA's chips have more power than anybody else's. Does, uh, does Intel want to catch them? Hence why they did Mobileye. Is Waymo's chi are Waymo's chips better? I don't know. Um, Audi tells me that no, NVIDIA's chips are better. Waymo as a company, which obviously is Alphabet, I think is ahead. Great piece by Eric Johnson about where Google Alphabet is right now. But I want to emphasize to people that NVIDIA is one of the most expensive stocks I follow, but it is the ultimate momentum stock in this market now, even exceeding anything in FANG. And just a reminder, Alphabet is Action Learners Plus. Yes, we own that, and uh, you know, we own uh, Facebook too. Uh, sometimes people say to me, well, Jim, why didn't you own this, that, that? You cannot run, if you're running diversified portfolio and you come in and you run Western Digital and you have uh, uh, Autodesk and you also have uh, Facebook and you have Amazon and you have Netflix, you know, it, what you're doing is setting yourself up for a 2000 situation. If 2000 does occur, it repeats itself. So uh, we try to stay diversified because that's the only free lunch. We can't do it. We're running charitable trust. If you want to be a gunner and you want to buy options and all those, hey, God bless you. I think that that's fine. But we can't do it that way as much as tempting as it is. All right, let's transition to some retail earnings. What did you make of Foot Locker? Okay, so Foot Locker, um, this was disturbing because now Foot Locker and Children's Place were the last two in the mall that were really doing well. And we always thought that Foot Locker was a little more immune to Amazon because kids' feet change size, so it's very difficult to just order online. That's why Children's Place has been so great because obviously kids change size all the time. You have to try it on. You can't. You can try it on with Amazon and send it back or you just go to Children's Place. But this was disturbing quarter because uh, the CEO said it was disturbing. He was disappointed. He blamed this tax refund issue, the late tax refund. We've heard that from a bunch of people. My question on that is is that some guys had it and some guys didn't. Costco didn't have the late tax refund. So it's a, uh, I, I think that people are saying, wait a second, it's a canard. I don't want to write off Foot Locker. I've got to do more work. It's too good a company. But it says bad things about Nike and Under Armour and yes, even Adidas. Okay, and, and what about Gap? They also had a... Well, Gap had some big swings. I mean, you know, Old Navy is doing quite well and uh, and, and no one believes because uh, everybody thinks that's a quintessential mall store, so why bother? So it's hard to get traction on that company, uh, and it's been so hit or miss. Uh, it's certainly not a good short. Okay, and Ross Stores? Ross Stores had good, you know, Ross Stores had a good number relative to uh, TJX, and, and I, you know, we want to buy TJX for Axelers right now because we think they kitchen sit, we think they deliberately low ball, we think that things are really great there. But Ross Stores had a better quarter relative to TJX, and people consider those two the same. Uh, and I would like to see, um, I think TJX is a much better buy at this point. All right, and what about John Deere? Deere is about international. I've been saying this over and over again. By the way, if you go buy, try to buy a Deere, uh, in Italy. Uh, recently my wife tried to buy a deer in Italy and she was directed toward uh, Cub Cadet. Why? Because deer is the highest price point. Why? Because they got the best service. I mention this because it was the international that drove deer. International was incredibly strong. It was not U.S. And construction and far the uh, forestry business, construction, which has been lagging, it was also on fire and they gave you really good guidance for next year. Their level of confidence makes you feel terrific about deer. All right, then finally on Stop Trading, you talked about Cabot Oil and Gas. Well, here, I mean, a lot of people are, are kind of like aggrieved that why I like Chesapeake and don't like Chesapeake. Look, what I said is that if you think it's going to be a hot summer, then you're going to burn off a lot of the natural gas inventories, and that's going to drive up the price of natural gas. And the beneficiary, the most lever beneficiary is Chesapeake. The most unlevered beneficiary, just the one that has the lowest cost, is capital oil and gas. So I'm saying it, if you believe, now I don't like, as David Faber pointed out to me, quickly, Jim, are you like want to play the weather? No, but other people do. If you want to play the weather, it's Chesapeake, and then the higher quality one is capital oil and gas. Okay, Jim Kramer, thank you so much you. as always. And for more of the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to the street.com. Have a great weekend.